Welcome to Physics for Engineers, and this is, this is our lesson eight, and, and our topic is about elasticity. So our learning objectives are to understand how stone, stress, strain, and elastic modulus classify different types of stress and elastic moduli, and solve problems applying Hoch's law. So our topic outline, we will start with defining Hoch's law, then we will discuss tensile stress, bulk stress, and shear stress. So first topic, Hoch's law. We can observe that when we apply force to compress, or stretch or squeeze a spring and a rubber, a deformation to its shape of work. But eventually, you can remove that force, it returns to its original shape or size. Same with a diving board. A depletion is happened when a man jumped to it full. So, such material is we call elastic because after it experiences a force or deformation to its shape, it has ability to return to its original shape. So, this deformation in shape and ability to return to its original shape can be observed with uh, steel. At this picture, a bridge cut cable. So this cable carrying the weight of the bridge and it's under stress and it has an elongation or deformation with its length. We can also see this with a rope that used to pull a material with a pulley. So, what is elasticity? Elastic elasticity is the ability of a material to resist the deformation and ability to return to its original shape. So, from an atomic viewpoint, elastic behavior has its origin in the forces that atoms exert on each other the interatomic forces that hold the atoms of a, sol so of a solid material together are particularly strong. So considerable force must be applied to stretch or compress a solid object and return to its original shape. Let's watch this simulation from Science Virtual Lab So in this video, we will try to have test time testing of material using an UTM or universal testing machine. So we have here a laptop to show the relationship of force and elongation. So for this experiment, we will use a low carbon steel rod. So a continuous force is being applied to the rod. To stretch the material. We can observe now in the graph how, how the displacement or the elongation for As of the moment, we can see any changes or deformation with the rod. And this time we can see the necking, it start to deform and eventually it reach its fracture point. So let's see again this graph. So to watch more experiment with Science Laboratory Lab, you can visit their YouTube channel or download their application in Google Play Store. There are so many other 
uh, virtual laboratory that you can enjoy, especially in material testing. Okay, so this is the stress strain diagram. This same diagram that we observed with the uh, virtual simulation. So at this point O is the original shape and no force being applied. So later on we will discuss what is strain and strain but this time let's just observe the relationship of stress and strain with this diagram. So from point O to point A, we can see a straight line or there is a proportionality with stress and strain. So this proportionality is, is where the Hawke's law obey. So again, Hawke's law is proportionality defined as the proportionality of stress and strain or simply stress stress is directly proportional with strain but after switching it at the region of point a to point b the stress is not proportional now with strain or Simply, Hawke's law is not being obeyed or applied now. But still, within this region, uh, let's change the color. I want the color green. Okay. So, from this within this region, we can say it is has a elastic behavior. So, what do you mean by elastic behavior? So after you remove the force applied, it returned to its original shape. So from point A, where it has a elongation or deformation of the shape, and after apply after removing the force, it returned to point O. Or at point B, after applying the force, return to point O. So point B is what we call yield point. So the, in terms of stress, the stress being applied at this point B is what we call elastic limit. So again, within this region from point O to point B, the material shows an elastic behavior, which means after applying or removing the force, it returns to its original shape. Now, from point B to point E, our material now is behaving as a plastic or this region we call a plastic deformation which means which means after applying a force or, up, or after removing the force it doesn't return to its original shape So this point C, at point C, a material does not come back to its original length after we remove the force. So instead of going to point O, it follows this line. So there's an offset with its, elong uh, with its length or shape. 
So from point zero or initial position or initial stre uh, strain, it is now has a greater length. So the material has now undergone an irreversible deformation. So it has required that what we call a permanent set. So further increase with the load or force beyond point C, the product of large amount in strain for a relatively small increase in stress until point D. Until point D, which is now called the ultimate stress point. So at this point is where the material is capable of, of holding the force or the stress. So beyond point D, it reaches the fracture. So point E is the fracture point. Then after that, if you continue to apply the force, it will break. So the behavior of this material again is in plastic deformation, which is irreversible. Now, after we have able to define, uh, after we discuss this show this stress strain diagram let's define now what is stress what is strain and what's going on with this okay so stress So the symbol we use for to represent stress is this one. And the unit for stress, uh, sorry. So stress is equal to force applied divided by the resisting area. So meaning the unit for stress is Newton per meter squared. We're in one Newton per meter squared is equal to one Pascal. So in standard unit or as a unit, the, the unit for stress is Pascal in honor of Blaise Pascal. So in terms of English, the unit for stress is PSI or pound per square inch wherein one PSI is equal to 6,895 Pascal or one Pascal is equal to 1.45 times 10 raised to negative 4 PSI. Again, PSI is pound per square inch. Okay, so for strain, are you, our symbol is this one. So strain is the ratio of the elongation to its original length, or in symbol, change in length, delta L over 
L0 or the original length. So this is a unitless, a unitless quantity. Now, let's define elastic moduli. Elastic moduli is the ratio or the proportionality of tensile stress. Oh, sorry, sorry, not tensile stress. The elastic moduli, again, is the proportionality of stress and strain. Later in the next video, we will discuss the tensile stress. But for now, let's just have this stress and strain. So we know that stress is force over area. And strain is the elongation. Again, this delta L is elongation. In some reference, you can see the symbol we use for elongation is this one. But for now, particularly for this lesson, we will use, we will stick with delta L. Okay. So back to strain. Strain is the ratio of elongation with the original length. So now we have this elastic modulus is equal to force applied times the original length divided by the area times the elongation. So this proportionality is what we call again the Hawke's law.